All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. Yes, unfortunately, welcome back to Ministry Revealed. Ah, we needed a breather after this last go round, didn't we? It is May 14th, 2021. And before we get started, a big shout out to my wife, my 50 year old wife celebrating her Jubilee. And I'm sure I could say this as well because she posted it in the forum. Our sister Jana as well is also turning 50 today on May 14th. So happy birthday to you both. I love you, honey. And we'll keep being patient. We know we're at hand. Guys, we have these conversations in our house all the time, as I'm sure many of you do that have uh, supportive spouses. Um, man... You know, it's it's easy to to just get so frustrated, isn't it? You know, it's <laughs> if it was easy, guys, it wouldn't have been called a mystery since the beginning of creation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm chuckling with you guys now, but uh, I'm I wasn't chuckling for a couple days. I you know I was I get just as disappointed as you guys. I'll even say myself. I'll even say maybe a little bit more disappointed than many because the Lord has opened the books to me. He, we've been revealed the understanding of the end, the, the open gospels and the 14 years and, and all of these things, all of these absolutely mind-blowing revelations. And as much as it causes me to have pain when something like this doesn't happen, the first thing I'm reminded of is everything he has revealed to us. And when I think and I get bummed and I just say, oh, Lord, I, have I not understood? Have I not understood everything that's been revealed? Is, is there no pre-trib? Is there no mid? Is there no? And just as soon as my thoughts go to that, it doesn't last long because the moment it happens, I'm reminded yet again of everything that's been revealed, of all of the places the Lord has shown it, of all of the revelation of pre, mid, and post, of the 13, 14 years, of the 50, 14, 50. It's all true. We just haven't yet understood where our Lord God, Father Almighty, is counting from. Well, today we're going to touch on some of that. We're going to talk on some of it, and it's something that's been touched on a little bit, but we veered off in the last video because we're just so eagerly trying to find out where, Lord, where is your true Passover Resurrection Day this year. It doesn't mean it didn't happen in March, April, where they had it. It doesn't mean it, it, at Christ it, it wasn't in Aries. But where is it for you, Father God? Where is it for you now, this time? And I believe we have one more shot at this. The last video, we got, like I said, there was a little bit of distraction with it because for the longest time we've been throwing out, every time the, the full moon, new moon would come into the picture, we threw it out. And again, it's, it's thrown out again. You know, our brother Amish, I was having a conversation with him and some others over on Discord, and he was standing his ground. You know, he was correct. And it, it's not to say that um, he didn't want it to be right. Of course, we all wanted it to be right. And that was the point, right? We were trying to find to see it, it's got to be. Lord, what else is there? You know, I had asked Amish even and I said, well, we believe that it's 50 to, to the Pentecost count that the bride goes at the beginning. Then the 14 years begin and then the 50th Jubilee. And we all agreed. Yes, we believe it. We, we can see it and understand it in Scripture. So if that was the case, well, <laughs> what do we do? What do we do? Because this is the year. 
even the count, this is the year. In the whole 13, 14 years, this, this has to be the year. Because the Lord returns after 2,000 years, feet down on the Mount of Olives. That has to be 13 years at the end of 13 years from now. That would be at the end of 33, would be at the spring of 34. So from 33 into 34, 2033 into 2034, that's the end. And then the Lord is here and fulfills that final year, that 14th year. And then when all of that cleanup is done, it's the Jubilee. So I know we've understood. But in, in trying to say, my goodness, the Hebrew calendar is done and, and Gregorian was gone. We went to the Enoch and, and sun, moon, and stars count, and, and, and that was gone. Then we saw, okay, well, new moon, full moon, maybe, maybe that's it. And we tried to find things to, to, to see if that was it. But now that's come and gone. And we say, now what? Now what, Lord? What is this mystery that's been kept secret? You see, we shared this in a recent video, didn't we? The recent video... Uh, in fact, I, the first time I taught on this was probably close to three years ago. And, and I'm not going to teach on it again. I'm just making a point at the beginning of it. Remember this whole last chapter of Romans, last chapter of 1 Corinthians, last chapter of 2 Corinthians. You see, the workers here in Romans 1, uh, in Romans 16, are Priscilla and Aquila, putting their necks on the line. Okay, these are the workers of seals, the Smyrna and the workers of seals. And when Paul gets to the end of his greeting, he's talking about a group that's already gone. All right? So you got the seals workers, and then boom, he says, hey, and to give you comfort, we're, we're comforting you, and there, there was this mystery that's happened. When you get to the end of 1 Corinthians, the last chapter of 1 Corinthians, in chapter 16, it's another group of workers relating to the 144, and it's about the collection of the saints. And at the end of that story, you see a greeting of Priscilla and Aquila, who were the workers during this one. So you got the workers of seals, and then you got these that were taken at the beginning. Then you got the, those that were in seals that were, uh, sorry, then you got those that are chosen to work in trumpets. And you got the greeting from those that were seals. And then it goes, does the same type of thing in 2 Corinthians. So in 1 Corinthians, this is what I'm getting at. If it was easy, it wouldn't have been a mystery. Now, what was this mystery Paul was referring to at the beginning here? In, in the was when, when Paul said these things. Of course, he was relating to Christ. But what's the type and shadow of this to us? It's the bride of Christ. It's the vanishing. It's the escape. It's the pre-trib bride of Christ vanished. And he says, Romans 16, 25 and 26. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This is Paul speaking. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. I want you to remember that. Which was kept secret since the world began. Okay? What was in the beginning? Alpha. And Alpha was also Omega. All right? Alpha or Aleph and Tav. Okay? But now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Let me ask you, when, when Paul was writing this in Romans, when this was written, did all nations know? Was, was, there, was Christ known to all nations? For, for this obedience of faith, to, to some obedience of faith, to some somewhere? No. This is part of that mystery. This, this is the, the end time revelation of this mystery. This is the mystery or the revelation of the escape 
of the pre-trib bride of Christ. Okay? And it was a mystery kept secret since the world began. That's the topic of today. The beginning. Okay? It's the beginning, and then as we go through it, we'll go into this teaching and we'll lead it into a teaching and the time of the beginning right through to the time of the end and just show this character and 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 this group that's there. All right? So we're going to go into that. Um, let's see. Let me, let me start by, oh, doing my usual, letting you guys know, anybody that's new, you really need to get a grasp and to understand what this ministry has been revealed. Come and watch this 30-minute video, this 30-minute video, and this almost two-hour video, and it's going to blow your mind. You're going to understand once and for all who the Gospels are speaking to in this 30-minute introduction video. The printout of this can be found in the description box below, or you can go to ministryrevealed.com. You could buy the book on Amazon, or you can download the free PDF version and read it yourself, and it'll go into greater detail than this intro as to who the Gospels are speaking to. The second one is the introduction to the truth that is 14 years. It is two sets of seven. And you're going to say, well, why weren't these Gospels understood before? That we've all been taught from Matthew, but really we want to be Luke. Luke is speaking to the escaped bride of Christ, but he knows all things. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church, and Matthew is speaking to the Jews. That part wasn't the mystery. But all of our lives, we've been taught from Matthew, and that's what caused all of this being missed. Okay, All of the misunderstanding. This third video will help you understand how this was all missed in these two key revelations that have been given to this ministry. And then you can go in from there and watch more of these videos. You know, come and understand pre, mid, and post like you never have seen before. You're going to understand why people have argued for centuries, whether it's pre, mid, or post. The truth is they're all true. It's the pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ. It's the mid-trib at the end of seals, rapture of the church. Then it's Jacob's trouble, the time of trumpets, the second seven years. And then at that one, at the end of that, it's the Lord returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. Okay, you will see that it's a whole 13 to 14 year event that's about to play out. You'll be able to understand the seven churches and how they play out in the end of days. Incredible, incredible revelations. So I recommend this playlist to everybody. Anybody that's new, you must start with these three. Start with the first 30 minutes and just take it from there. You'll be blown away. And I promise you, it'll right. be the best 30 minutes you have ever spent in trying to understand scripture. All right? So now with that, let's go a little bit further into what I wanted to talk about today or or where I wanted to start, actually. And where I wanted to start was a reminder of this video. I went to get my uh, coffee today, and one of the ladies uh, at the grocery store that I grabbed my coffee in the Starbucks in the grocery store um, because I'm smart that way. <laughs> I say that jokingly because there's no lineups. You know, the grocery store Starbucks is always faster. Never, virtually never any lineups. Anyways, and it was my wife's birthday, so I had to get her flowers. And the lady at the till, we're talking, and I see them all the time. And she suddenly says out of the blue, oh, what do you think about this whole stuff going on with COVID? And I'm like, huh, interesting you should ask. Because she's kind of, she looks into the truth movement. I didn't know this of this lady. So we were talking, and I, I was relating this video to her, that this, there's a video in 2010, and you guys all know this, but I'm bringing it up for a reason, to remind ourselves that as much as it hurts to still be here and to say, Lord, what have we missed? That we can look around the earth, the entire world, and know that in 2010, we have a video that tells us that these elites behind closed doors meeting that was held said that they would release a virus on China 
China would catch a cold. China would either retaliate or it would mutate and spread across the world. And the Western world would go into lockdown and a global pandemic would be declared. What? We are in the midst of that right now. It's not a mystery to anybody listening. But what's fascinating is that this video was given to me about 12 hours before the global pandemic was declared on the day that I was saying nine months or so before, seven, eight, nine months before, that on March 11th, 2020, we were looking at the escape, but the world was going to change. And that was when the global pandemic was declared. And 12 hours before it was declared, in the middle of the night from the 10th to the 11th of March, 2020, this video was sent to me. Along with the confirmation of that I had understood that it's 50, 14, 50. This video went on to say that Israel and Iran, so they wanted Iran to attack Israel and there to be a whole event that start first. Then it would be the global pandemic starting with China catching a cold. So obviously that the, the war hasn't happened yet, but the pandemic did. So they released it. This is the evidence that it was a planned operation. Yes, the, the, yes, the virus is real. Is it killing as many as it do? I, I don't know. I'm, I know it's killing some. It even said in the video. Ten years before it happened relating it exactly as it's happened, all right? So that means the next thing to come is exactly what we understood would come, which was a short attack in the Middle East against Israel. This first attack, as I've said before, I don't know if we're going to see it fully, this first attack, before we go or not, all right? We might, it might just be as we're going, uh, as the bride is escaped, as we pray to be accounted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. But it, it, it might be even in the, the wedding week while the bride is gone, when the bride is gone, okay? Before the Lord returns to begin his 40 days as the Son of Man. So, you know, but we look around the earth right now I, I, we look around the world and we've got this COVID and, and greater restrictions and all these things going on again. And they're calling it the third wave. You guys want to see something really interesting? Go watch uh, uh, the Hollywood movie, uh, The Fifth Wave. And listen to the minutes, I think 12 to 14 minutes in, what they discuss about the third wave. The third wave is a pandemic because of birds, like the bird flu, right? And H1N1, like a covid it's a flu that started wiping out people everywhere and they couldn't keep up with it. The fourth wave, they started taking kids. They were going into camps and they were going to separate the kids from the parents. And then the fifth wave was full out war. Hello. Again, you know, foreshadowing, foretelling in movies, right? But this wasn't that. This was from a meeting. So what do we know is coming? Well, we know that first attack on Israel is coming. Is that first attack, the, the big attack that removes them from the, from the country from, and, and from Jerusalem? No. The first attack is what will bring about the peace and safety. That peace and safety, by the way, is not for the escape of the bride of Christ, brothers and sisters. The bride of Christ will be gone first. Remember, we're also looking for this meteor event connected to all this, okay? But I wanted to remind you guys that it was in a video from 2010 about a meeting in 2005 that, this, that, that we can look around the world now and see it's taking place. And guess what? If we now start looking at the Middle East and we start looking at Israel, look at what's been happening for the last three, four days now. Attacks and attacks. Their, their rockets are getting through to Israel now. It's all over the news. I don't think that's going back in the bag. Because we know the season and time we're in. And then what will follow? Well, of course, we know World War III. All right? So we're aware of these things. You know, remember this, this book I was telling you guys about? I showed you this guy. Uh, 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 what was his name? I can't remember his name off the top of my head, 
But I spoke about this in regards to the book, The Fourth Turning. All right, you can get it online, PDF download as well. This book was written in two thousand. Uh, sorry, in 1997. And this one follows a pattern of history. Okay, it follows a pattern in history. But they talk about how this time isn't maybe just going to be another fourth turning, but it could go either as a bad fourth turning and things get good, or it can be absolutely ap uh, apocalyptic and devastating and devastating. All right. Well, we know from scripture that it's not simply going to be another cycle. We know it is the biblical end of days that are about to begin. Okay, so let me give you some reassurance by reading you a page and a half or a little, about a page of this, okay? Here, in summary, so this is uh, page 14, and we'll read a little bit of 15, then I'll jump to another part to show you, and then I'm going to show you something briefly at the end of it. Here, in summary, is what the rhythms of modern history warn about America's future. The next fourth turning is due to begin shortly after the new millennium. Remember, they wrote this in 1997. Midway through the OO decade, I guess that's just something they coined for the term of that time. Around the year 2005, see, around the year 2005, but you're going to see something else. You know, they said from 1997, they said 8, 10, maybe 12 years. Okay. So around 2005, you know what it was? 2008. A sudden spark will catalyze a crisis mode or mood. Okay. What was it? Of course, the housing crisis, right? Remnants of the old social order will disintegrate. Political and economic trust will implode. Real hardship will beset the land with severe distress that could involve questions of class, race, nation, and empire. See, all of these things from that beginning haven't gone away. They've, build, they've built up and they've gotten worse and worse and worse. Yet this time of trouble will bring seeds of social rebirth. Americans will share a regret about recent mistakes and, resol uh, and a resol resolute new consensus about what to do. The very survival of the nation will feel at stake. Sometime before the year 2025, uh, America will pass through a great gate in history, commensurate with the American Revolution, Civil War, and twin emergencies of the Great Depression and World War II. You see? How do they know this? They follow cycles of history, right? And it says, the risk of catastrophe will be very high. The nation could erupt into insurrection or social violence Cracking, uh, crack up uh, geographically or succumb to authoritarian rule. Hello. If there is war, it is likely to be one of maximum risk and effort. In other words, a total war. Every fourth turning has registered an upward ratchet in the technology of destruction and mankind's willingness to use it which the nation, uh, technology to annihilation, which the nation swiftly used. So remember World War II, the atomic bomb, right? The nation swiftly put it to use as soon as it had it. This time, America will enter a fourth turning with the means to inflict unimaginable horrors and perhaps will confront adversaries who possess the same. All right? This is, how was this understood, right? See what we're getting at? All of these things, men's plans and the elite behind the scenes, cycles of, of, of life throughout 80 and 100 year generational cycles of things taking place. They could follow these patterns. It's all around us. Remember, there was a book that the, uh, uh, Peter Thiel, uh, the, one of the co-founders of PayPal, he also wrote a book, I think, in the late, two, uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And it was the same type of thing. That's why him and a lot of billionaires have bunkers, fancy bunkers, over in New Zealand. They were preparing for what was coming. 
because they don't see it as just another fourth turning. You see, these guys aren't the only ones that wrote books like this. There are many because they understand trends and cycles and population growth and so forth. Okay, The, the boomer generation can't be sustained. Everything's got to be wiped out. And we know biblically that all of this is going to be connected to the one world order, the one currency, the one religion, World War III. It's all the biblical end of days this time. And this is what they say next. Thus, might the next fourth turning end in apocalypse or glory? We know it'll be apocalypse and then glory for many, right? The nation could be ruined, its democracy destroyed, and millions of people scattered or killed. We cannot stop the seasons of history, but we can prepare for them. Right now in 1997, we have eight, ten, perhaps a dozen years to get ready. You see, this is what I was telling you about a little a little while ago. So they were right in the ballpark of when it would all begin in 2008. Okay? That doesn't mean the whole 20 years and, and 14 years and all that goes all the way back to 2008. That's not what we're saying. It was a cycle in history. And what you come to find out as we go to... I'm going to show you another piece here. As we go further down, let me show you what they say here because it's not about um, our 14 years, if you will, right? The, The revelation of 14 years. What it is, give me a moment here. What it is, is the period to when they see this coming to an end, when things will settle down. You see, so here they had it. If the crisis catalyst comes on schedule around the year 2005, so 2008, okay? So it was about two to three years, right? Seven into eight, so two to three years later, then the climax will be due around the year 2020. Well, how about that? We'll be around the year 2020. And in 2020, we had the climax where where now it's really taken off. And it was the global pandemic that started. And the resolution, you see, but they said war and stuff is still coming. Don't forget. With the resolution around the year 2026. So if it was off by a little bit, they're saying 2026. Do you know what the answer is, brothers and sisters? 21 to 22, 22 to 23. 23 to 24, 24 to 25, 25 to 26, 26 to 27, right? 27 into 28. Why does that matter? What's this all about? When the Lord returns on heavenly Mount Zion. When the Lord has returned on Mount Zion and the rebuilding begins. There will be a resolution, you see? That resolution is when the Lord comes on Mount Zion. That will be the time of the rapture of the sleeping church that will have woken up during tribulation. Guys, it's all around us. It is all saying the same thing. So it's not that we should be so distraught in saying, Lord, is it it not going to happen? No, it's absolutely going to happen. We just haven't been able to understand the Lord's time frame of this when. When is the Lord looking? How is the Lord considering these things? Okay. Let me, I want to see if I can find that. I thought that was right here. Because there was something that was interesting. At the end of this book, I believe these guys were Christians, or at least maybe one of them was Christian. And what they had... Well, here, I'll just go to it. So and I did this just so you guys can get an understanding that you could see that that you could see that we, we understand. It's all around us. They, it, they've known for decades. For decades it's been known. But has it been understood with the eyes of Scripture? For some, it has. 
but not in, of course, the 13, 14 years. Okay. Now, the end of that book, this is how the end of that book actually finished, which was really interesting. Uh, did I get it right? Yeah, Ecclesiastes. So it ends with Ecclesiastes uh, 3, chapter 3, 1 through 8. And the reason I, I wanted to show you guys quickly is you know how many times there are? Okay? A time to be born and a time to die. That's one. Okay? It's not because there's a time here. You have a semicolon which separates the next one. So you have a time to be born. Think bride of Christ. Okay? There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant. Think of... Those that are going to work seals, they, they need to plant for the harvest that the Lord is going to take in, okay? And a time to pluck up. A time to kill, hello, in the tribulation, during the early part of seals into mid-seals, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep, think of those that are under the altar, okay? And a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast stones think of the end of the think of the seventh uh, seal think of the seventh seal the incense burner and it's thrown down to the earth not the stones that we talk about okay this is at this is at the seventh uh, seal and a time to gather a time to embrace and a time to refrain all together guess how many there are yeah you guessed it 14 14 a times, all right? <laughs> we talk about that every every time we find one, we're just always so blown away to say, there it is again, over and over and over again, okay? Brothers and sisters, we have understood. We just need to keep our heads up. We need to be strengthened. And I know for many of you, you're probably like, ah, I'm okay with it, Alan. It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm ready whenever it is. Let's just always be ready. Let's be in the word. Let's keep lifting each other up and strengthening each other, praying for each other. I get it. But for many, and myself included, the understanding of the time frame of the when is, is very important. And it's not because of date setting. I would love to never talk about a season in time that I thought it was. I would have loved to just teach the revelation of the end. But I, it, it, the ministry given to me is the, is the revelation of the end. So if you have the revelation and the understanding of the 13 and 14 in these groups and, and the time frames and, and you know that it's 50, 14, 50, and that's the whole revelation of the big picture, well, there's got to be a start that you must understand. We've got to be able to see this, this time frame somewhere. And we do. It's now. It's been now since spring. You know, we've been saying this since the beginning of the year. And you guys are were probably thinking, oh, he's going to change his tune. That he, he's not thinking, oh, it's going to be at the true Passover to resurrection. I mean, at the true resurrection. No, nope, I haven't changed my tune. As crazy as it sounds, I am telling you, it will happen at true resurrection. That's what the scriptures revealed. We know that the first fruits of the wheat harvest are to be observed at resurrection day. Okay? We know the body gone in Luke 24. We understand all these things. We haven't been looking for another day for months. <laughs> the problem has been where the father who is the father you guys know who the father is alpha right remember and the lord is what the alpha and the omega remember we were saying that at the beginning that's what we're going to be talking about and then we're going to lead it into to this teaching of from the beginning to the end okay let me ask you this if the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end, because the Lord said that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Toph, well, we know that the end of days is what? The beginning of the end. 
See, you don't have to be a genius to figure that out, right? So if the beginning of it all is the end of it all, and in the end is revealed in the beginning, then what is the beginning of the end? Could it be as the beginning was? Haven't we all been told that? I remember teachings with Perry Stone and, and Chuck Missler, right? That the beginning, that the book of Genesis reveals the end. We've shown it in, oh man, many, many, many places. Seven, eight, nine, ten places. In fact, we've actually got chapters to years from Genesis 1 to Genesis 21 revealing it as well. You see? If the beginning has the end, and the end, the beginning of the end of tribulation then is there a mystery in there for us? And this is what I wanted to show you guys. Do you remember this? Taurus, the bull, is the resurrection, remember? In fact, we got a video we shared on it just not too long ago. A little under two weeks ago. Bull equals resurrection. But... Like I said, we got caught off guard, or I, I'll say I got caught off guard by going to the crescent, uh, uh, the full moon as the new moon, because we thought we were out of options. Something wasn't jiving. But guess what? We're in the bull. We're still in the ox. We're still in the bull. Remember, Jesus said, in the beginning. Who is the beginning? Christ is the beginning. We shared this before and many, many times, right? This beginning is the first fruits of the, of the feast of first fruits. That means this word beginning means Christ. Okay? He is the beginning and the end. So it, it, it's not a mystery why Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Revelation, the end of the book of Revelation, Revelation 22 verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. From the beginning of the first book to the end of the last book. So if that's the case, let's have a look at this a little bit closer. And when we spoke about this months ago, uh, you know, it was like three or four months ago when this when this was all getting rolling here in relation to, actually it was even longer than that, but when one thing in particular came up, and that is, I remember somebody either commenting or sending me an email, and I don't remember who it was. But what had happened was we were saying, okay, well, at, in our time, just like I was saying earlier, in our time, let's go to the calendar. In our modern time, Passover is right here. Okay. Why was Passover? Well, the first full moon after the spring equinox. In Christ's time, it was Passover, da, 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 around here, after the spring equinox, because the sun was a month, a month different, okay? And this was the difference between the Hebrew calendar that we looked at first, that we were contemplating and considering and watching for. Then we went into the Enoch, sun, moon, and stars with Aries, and the sun being off from when Christ was here. But I had also received an email back before these things, when we started talking about these things, when the person said, well, okay, that's fine. But if you go back another 3,500 or so years, was it still in, you see, now it's in Pisces. At Christ, it was in Aries. But if you go back another 3,500 years, where was it? Was it still in Aries? You see, when Christ at that time at the crucifixion and resurrection, Passover was the first full moon after the spring equinox. So now, if we go back to the beginning. If we go to the time of Adam and Eve, and we go back to that beginning, where was spring? 
where was the spring equinox and the first full moon? And the person that had emailed this a while back said, you know, if you take it back to the beginning, it was in Taurus. And so this didn't come to me till this morning as I was putting this together early this morning. And the rest of the video will kind of tie in and lead us into the tribulation. And that I was doing a little bit last night. But I, I wasn't very happy. I really didn't eat much yesterday. I, I really just, <laughs> I wasn't feeling good. You know, I, I feel let down, but I know the Lord isn't letting us down. It's just, we got to keep digging because we haven't quite understood it yet. And so in this whole thought process and saying, well, if the resurrection equals the bull, then is it possible that as the beginning was, so will the beginning of the end? Okay, that whole thing I was just saying a moment ago, I think it's kind of catchy, right? <laughs> if the end is the beginning and the beginning is the end, then would the beginning of the end also make sense? Meaning, let's go all the way back to the beginning. And in the beginning, Taurus, the bull, the ox, was what? It is one of the oldest constellations dating back to at least the Bronze Age when it marked the location of the sun during the spring equinox. Okay? To many of you, that's not a mystery. But you see, the reason I'm looking at it and the reason I'm saying, okay, well, we've understood these things, right? We've heard of these things in the past. Well, there had to be something going on, guys. There has to be something to this. If 501450 is correct, which it is, confirmed literally by the Holy Spirit in that wild event you guys all know about, then there's got to be something, something we were still missing. And so if Taurus, if the bull was the representation of the spring equinox, and we know that the 14ers, the original 14ers, their issue was that Rome was declaring the 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 Passover or, or resurrection, well, yeah, I guess Passover, to be the Sunday after and the resurrection day, the Sunday after that full moon and so forth, whereas the 14ers were saying, no, it is from the full moon regardless of which day it lands on. That's our Passover. Okay? When they did it, yes, it was an Aries, because at Christ's time it was an Aries. Now we're in Pisces, and we thought maybe it should have been in Pisces. But if the end of days is the beginning of the end, I thought, why don't we go look at the beginning? See? The beginning. Remember it said the time of the Bronze Age. Look, you can go back thousands of years, B.C., guys. If we go back thousands of years, maybe we can start to understand these things. Remember? Aleph. The bull, does that look familiar? All right. We know it's what it means. All right. We've got it here too. This is always a good website to understand some of these things and dig into them. Hebrew for Christians. Remember, we said father, father. Where is the father? The Lord God counting it. The letter alpha is the father of the Aleph Bet. All right. The ox. See, we're understanding these things, aren't we? Well, check this out. Look at this with the flower moon that's coming. Okay? We all know that there's this full moon coming. And this full moon is coming on May 26th. I think this is my time. If you want to see Israel's time, uh, this Jerusalem, okay? Jerusalem, May 26th, 2.13 p.m. full moon. So what are we looking at then? We're looking at the same thing we were prior to this last sidetrack of full moon, new moon. We're back to the full moon uh, with Christ, all right, at his at crucifixion, okay? 
at Passover. Now, what's interesting with the full moon, I want to show you this. Check this out. The full moon has an interesting name. Okay, it's called full moon, corn planting moon. That's interesting, right? Weren't we just, weren't we just saying that? A time to, there is a birth and then a time for planting, okay? The milk moon, while some named it the hair moon, the rabbit moon. See, remember Easter? It seems fairly strange that it would be called Easter, doesn't it? Well, check this out. It even talks about it. Look at how long this full moon is going to last. This full moon, of course, we know is going to be a super blood moon. So it's going to be a super flower blood moon on the 26th. Well, what's, what's also interesting about that, of course, we all know that it relates to the super blood moons that we had in 2014, 15, and so forth. Well, that was the time frame of this count, wasn't it? Seven years prior. So now here we are coming to this blood moon and looking, could this be the time? Well, it's interesting that it's going to last for 14 minutes. Maybe another possible little indication for us. But I want to show you something. Look at what it says about it. Um, and it relates to this, the, the hair moon. Uh, where is it? Because they said it was very, they said it's kind of strange that they call it the hair moon. Come on, where is it? Uh, they said from March. Uh, right in here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Other names for, for May's brightest moon phase are corn planting moon, mother's milk, so on and so forth. Uh, and then it says, some sources refer to it as hair moon, but this is more common for the March full moon. You see, guys, I find this, I thought this was very interesting for the simple fact that hair moon is always they're they're always relating it to easter all right and it's funny because when we were looking at this we saw a hair moon we saw grub worm and we were relating that to 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 the easter time but not easter but from the full moon the true way of of counting the 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 uh, uh passover and then we found another one in april and april it was also another one that was relating to a hair as well and the reason we found that was because of the Eastern Orthodox. Wouldn't it be fitting that the Christian church with, with Israel is wrong and that the, the, uh, um, the Eastern Orthodox is also wrong and that the Lord is using his, the Aleph, the beginning, the Ox is using his beginning? And the third time for three months in a row, it could still be referred to hair. Because now it's March. Then at Christ, it was April. And in the beginning, it was May. You see, but because it was really May? No, I just showed you. 3,500 or so B.C., the spring equinox was the ox. So it's interesting that they, that some still call it the hair moon relating to Easter in May. The third one away. I thought that was interesting and just wanted to add it to the mix. Because now watch this. Okay, here's the time in Israel. This, we know, this is when Christ would be on the cross. Okay, but let's have a look back in history. This has always been a really good website, guys. It's cgsf.org. This one, you could type in the year. It'll, it'll fetch the Roman year, and it has the Hebrew calendar and the Gregorian calendar. And it, it bases the entire thing has a calculation on the sun, moon, and stars. So I'm going to show you something really interesting here. Check this out. We're going to go into Stellarium. And the reason I came to 3965, just so you guys are aware, is 
We're in 2021. Okay? In 2021, there's 14 more years to go. And if we go all the way back to the fall of Adam and Eve, and we know that it was like 33 from creation, okay? We end up in 3965 as that time frame. So I said, if we go back to the time of the beginning, you see, these guys were telling us you can go back essentially to the beginning, to Adam and Eve. And at that time, it was it was Taurus, it was the bull. Okay, it was the ox that was leading the spring equinox. So I said, let's go have a look and see what it says. So that's what we did. Look at what it says. Here is Adar. Here's Nissan. Nissan 1 is right here. Nissan 1 of 3965 BC. Now, the Hebrews got its own weird data of saying what it is, but on the Gregorian, okay, we've got it on the Gregorian. So, Nisan 1, there it is, to the Gregorian would be March 31st. So, let's go look at Stellarium. 3965, March 31st, zero moon elimination because it's dark moon at the beginning of the month, right? Not full moon anymore. Dark moon at the beginning of the month. We're going to that crescent, going all the way back to what everybody, we had always understood until that last little blip on the last video. Okay? Look at what we see. The sun is in Taurus. The new moon. Let's go forward now to Passover. Okay? There's the time of Passover, full moon. On the 14th, and there's the sun, okay? There's the sun in the bull still, and the moon is obviously on the opposite, on the complete other side, okay? So, if this was the beginning, just as I'm showing here, if this was the relation to the beginning of the first Passover, well... What if we go to 2021 and we go to May and we go to, of course, what we knew, the the dark moon, right? And what do we see? The sun is in Taurus. Let's keep going. Let's go to Passover, go to full moon. There's full moon, 100% illumination. And what do we have? There's our sun in Taurus, and the moon is on the other side. And this moon is a full moon, uh, 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 a super full moon blood moon. Kind of like how everything started back in 2014. So am I saying, man, this is it. This is locked in. Nah, man, I, I, I'm too hurt. <laughs> I'm too hurt to say, man, this is it. Yeah, go. But. Do I believe this is like my last ditch effort? This is kind of like the end of the line? Well, remember, this isn't Resurrection Day. This is Passover. Okay? So if the end is like the beginning, and the beginning of the end is the beginning... Well, this is Resurrection Day. Uh, sorry, this is Passover. Okay? I always see how the they have it one day off. Because this is the full moon. But it's like at what? Uh, what was it in Israel? Let's have a quick look again. There. 2.13 in the afternoon in Israel. So 2.13 in the afternoon. He's on the cross. He would be taken down before sunset. Right? So the Lord is taken into the hands of sinful men. Around here in Jerusalem, remember we've been talking about that? What, it, what does this relate to? So if this is going to be the time frame, then what are we still looking for, guys? We're still looking for that meteor, right? We're looking for that stone's throw. Where is that stone's throw? 
Well, if this is the period making the 28th resurrection day, then we'd be looking for the stone's throw of Jerusalem time sometime around the evening of the 25th. On our side of the world, sometimes during the day of the 25th. You see, it brings us back to this, remember? Remember when they spoke about this, you guys can see it here. It's uh, He's got it. It's Watchmen for that great day. I believe his name's John. And he's got it in the unlisted one. So it hasn't had a lot of views. It's not easy to find. All right. This video is the one that Paul's talking with Gil Broussard. And then he goes on to speak with um, with uh, 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 Israeli News Live, Stephen Bendenoon. And this was back in 2019. And it was about the two NASA or the two or four NASA astronauts, and they left info on the table for these guys to look at. And they believed that this meteor was going to there was going to be an event where it was going to crash into uh, Saturn, and then the Earth would pass through the debris field, probably around that time of Passover, around the twenty eighth of March is what they believed, okay? But it was connected to Passover. Now, scripturally or, or, or visually, would we say, according to what we understand in the sun, moon, and stars, and, 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 and spring equinox and all that, Passover is past. But guys, it's a mystery. We're not looking for something that's simple and easy to find and say, okay, well, this is where it is. It is a mystery that has been kept secret, that has been kept a mystery since the world began. So it wasn't going to be something easy and just say, okay, thank you, Lord. We've understood it now. It's resurrection day. We've got it. That was hard enough to eventually be revealed in all of our digging. But we come to find out it wasn't done yet, was it? And it wasn't the next, and it wasn't the next. If it's not this, I have zero idea. I have zero idea. But why was this interesting? Because they were saying Passover. Okay, they were wrong on when they expected this to come, but I am still of the same argument that the reason Christ said on Passover night before he was taken into the hands of sinful men, which came next, he said he was a stone's throw away for a reason. Psalms 18 is craziness for a reason. People have had dreams and visions of meteors and things coming down and then us going for a reason. I think the one and only dream, and I think I had another one that connected to it, was that there was meteors coming, and I had asked the Lord before the dream that I was given three and a half years ago, that I said, Lord, that it would be understood that it would happen by uh, before Passover. Right? I had connected this to Passover, and I received the dream that I remembered crystal clear, and I still remember what it looked like and everything to it to this day. But it was seeking it to Passover. And so I still believe that this is that. I still believe my dream was saying that. I still believe Luke chapter 2 relates to the stone's throw. I still believe the reason why in Luke in John chapter 8, Jesus says, he who is without sin can cast the first stone, or let him who is without sin cast the first stone at her, at the woman, at the bride. He is the only one without sin. He is the only one that can cast that first stone. So we're still looking for that to be coming as well. This was shared uh, in the forum over on Ministry Revealed, but it was also shared today, and that's why I looked at it again today, um, with our brother, uh, my brother Dennis. One of our brothers, Dennis, he's not in the forum. He's down in Florida, and he emails me all the time, and we chat with things back and forth through email. And he had sent me this as well with some things to look at. And so I was paying attention, watching a little bit into this video. Again, it was shared in the forum as well. 
And Jacko here with, uh, we all know his ministry. He's sharing how you see the tip of the sword and it's going to the dove, right? There you can see it going to the dove, the tip of the sword. And of course, we got the Denver airport, the tip of the sword. Well, what's also really interesting and which is lining up with this that we're talking about is that he then shows this and I had never seen this before. There's this planet afterwards from the tip of that sword and it looks he shows how it looks like Jupiter but it has the rings of Saturn it was very interesting and so what he was getting at was he believes that it's a meteor hit and that this has to do with with an explosion that then is caused by this here. Let me show you. See that? Jacko's had this image for a long time. So this is what he's talking about. You can see the, the hole, the spot. And then we all know that there's this, this celestial event that's going to take place. Not obviously maybe as dramatic looking as that. But then it would refer back to what the NASA scientists believe are coming at a Passover time which they thought was March 28th, which we considered at March 28th, which we considered at uh, April, right? The, the sun, moon, and stars count, which we're now still contemplating and considering again because it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And we found it in scripture relating to the portion of pre as well. Okay. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not done with saying, hey, this is what we're still watching for first. You see, if you guys remember this, <clears throat> I haven't shown it for a little while. This was Prophecy Club. And Prophecy Club, his wife had audibles from the Lord. But within it, Stan from Prophecy Club added some things within it that he had understood over all of his years with people coming in with prophecies and so forth. But you'll notice it says not necessarily the order of fulfillment. That's very important for us because the first one he has is Omer ushers in Palestinian state. That is not first. You see, this is something we have come to understand very, very well here in this ministry. There's going to be a first attack on Israel. The bride will be taken or a meteor will come the bride will be taken. America will be in distress. Israel will, will have been attacked by this first attack. Then will come the peace and safety. This Omer ushers in Palestinian state. I believe that Omer ushering in is Pentecost. Is Pentecost. All right. We've shared it many times. Who is the one that's going to usher in this Pentecost? The modern day Cyrus. You see, to fulfill the three score, the 10 years, because Israel, they never uh, um, fulfilled the Sabbath since having the land. Jerusalem has not fulfilled the land, uh, uh, the Sabbaths of, of rest every seven years. They've got to be removed from the land. And we say, well, today is, is that day. I get it. Today is that day, but not where the Lord God is counting from. That's been the mystery this entire process for three and a half years. The entire thing has been where the Father God is counting from. We've shared this many times in, 30, in uh, 2 Chronicles 36. This, this destruction coming upon them. And then when this destruction comes, this is when Cyrus will stand. Cyrus is going to make the proclamation. Cyrus is going to say he's the one anointed by the Lord. He's the one <clears throat> who's going to, to allow them to go and rebuild. But we know it won't happen for four years. And when it does, they're only going to get the foundation done. And then it'll be hindered again. Because the Lord God said the land will rest for seven years. Because of all of their defiling of Jerusalem, all of their disobedience of Jerusalem, 
It cannot be built until the land has its seven years of rest. Those seven years are the portion of the sleeping church, are the portion of of the lost tribes, Israel, Gentiles mixed within them. And the one who's going to make this decree is going to be the modern day Cyrus. This modern day Cyrus is going to make the decree to the image. Is going to be the one who ushers in this Palestinian state. But what we understand here, this will not come at the beginning. This will come at the time of what? This will come at the time of the dove leaving after the 50 days. Following? This is what's coming. So this isn't first. This is first. He doesn't have the escape in here, all right? What's coming first? Meteors hit Puerto Rico. Okay, so somewhere down in there. Catastrophe hits America. The next one is his. That doesn't count. One of America's greatest times of need. Israel refuses to help America. Arabs attack Israel. World War III begins. Between these two right here, Israel's going to refuse to help because Israel is being attacked. Okay? When Israel has that first attack, then you take this Palestinian state, this Omer ushers in Palestinian state, and you put it right in between these two blue ones. What will happen at this Palestinian state, at this time when the decree is done by this modern day Cyrus, at the end of 50 days, that the true Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost will have now left, having anointed that group to work as Acts 2.0, that we call it, that group that's going to work seals, those those apostles and disciples that will be with them. See? What follows? The second Arab attack that will then begin World War III. I have had this in my notes. I have had this in my pictures. I've talked about it over the years because I believe it is true. I believe it's what's coming. And I believe we've understood it. Okay? What is this that we're talking about? What is this second attack? Okay? What is this second attack? Right here, so the decree will be made by, by, by the modern Cyrus, and then it says Arabs attack in World War III. What is that first attack? It is what we've shared for a long time. It's Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Watch this. Second Chronicles chapter 24. Look what happens. And it came to pass. At the end of the year, here we are again. We've talked about this end of the year. What can be the end of the year? Well, we think it relates to the rotation of the sun. We thought it it, it relates to Passover. We thought it relates to 365 day of the year on the Gregorian calendar. We thought it relates to trumpets. But we know what it relates to now. And we've spoken about it a number of times. For those that don't remember, it's the end time code. The Lord God is counting from Pentecost. Pentecost. The Lord God counts from Pentecost. That's why we see in 2 Corinthians 12 too. This was part of the revelation above 14 years ago. That portion of above is the 50. Then it's the 14 years. And he's talking to them as if being here the third time and he's coming to them. What was the first time above 14 years ago? Like a rapture and they go to the third heaven. 
The second one is the rapture, and they go to paradise because that's what the Lord comes prepared with, Mount Zion. He's coming with paradise. Okay? The, the revelation of all this and the confirmation of all of it came from the story of Genesis uh, with the Noah and the ark. Seven days, and then the 40, as the relation to the 40 of the Son of Man. When his 40 days are over, the raven, antichrist spirit goes out. Then the dove goes out. The dove will do the Acts 2.0 we've been talking about. And when the dove is gone, bang, the tribulation begins in the first seven days as years. Then the rapture of the plucked rapture. Then another seven days as years for trumpets. And then it's over. The dove returns no more. The dove goes out and returns no more. We've understood it, guys. And if we've understood, then there's a piece that was still missing. And the only piece that can make sense was to understand where the Lord God When Cyrus makes his decree, okay, when Cyrus, this is Cyrus's decree. This is the type and shadow of Cyrus's decree. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. Because the attack had happened, remember? It'll be seven weeks. There's Shabuas. See, what is it all relating to? 70 weeks, Shabuas. What is Shabuah? It's the Feast of Weeks. The only thing that makes any sense that's left in this time is that the Lord God is counting from the beginning. And when he was counting from the beginning, he was counting from Taurus. He was counting from the bull, from the ox. And we've proven, we've proven it in the in Stellarium, in the sun, moon, and stars. We've proven it from history. We've proven it with the calendar count. Is it really that, Lord? I'll tell you what. <laughs> I sure hope and pray it is. I am hoping and praying that we have understood that for this year. Because now when we come back to here and we're relating this to the to the first destruction, you see who's involved in it. <clears throat> Listen to what it says. And it came to pass at the end of the year. So if it's 50, 14, 50, okay, let, let me show you this another way. Just to help some newer people out. Okay, there are sets of seven. Seven years, Shemitah years, right? Seven sets of seven is 49. And then once that's over, it's the Jubilee year. All right? These are the final three sets of seven in all of the end of days to when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives and then will begin his millennial reign. This seven we're in right now and we're coming to the end of it. We've been trying to understand where these 50 days are, where they're going to begin. If we knew it, we would already understand and we'd, we'd already been gone. But they could not have begun based on everything Scripture is telling us because that above portion is 50. And the bride goes at the beginning of it. Because the Pentecost 50 count starts at Resurrection Day. There is no other 50-day count of Pentecost outside of that from Resurrection Day. None. Okay? So I know there's people that are saying, well, well, we can look at it and, and it's going to be second Passover. It's not going to be second Passover. I'll share something with you guys in that as we move forward too. It's not going to be second Passover. Second Passover is not for the escape of the bride. It's not for us. Okay? It's not for us. You'll see it. 
because second Passover, it has unleavened bread as a second unleavened bread because that's Passover week. But it doesn't have a second Pentecost. You follow? It might turn out this year to be pretty interesting, though, because if we look at the calendar, for example, where is this? This will actually be second Passover on the sun, moon, and stars calendar, you see? So people might confuse it with that, but at that point, hopefully, we won't have to worry about it anyways, right? Who cares? We're all going. Call it whatever you want. Okay? So in the sun, moon, and stars, yeah, it'll, it'll be like a second Passover. But in reality, it won't be the true second Passover. Okay? We, we, we've proven that out. We know it, it won't be. And I'll show you some scriptures to that. Okay? So here's what we have. When this first attack comes in, we saw earlier, we spoke about that video. We've talked about this before. We know it's proxies through, uh, uh, through Iran. But if you watch that 2010 video, even from like seven minutes to 16 minutes, you'll, you'll see that the plan is for Iran, that there's going to be tactical nukes launched. All right? There's going to be major devastation. What we've seen right now is nothing. It's just beginning. Almost like they're, they're overloading the the iron dome all right they're just overloading it so that they can bring about this attack this attack will bring in the peace and safety at the 50th day when that peace and safety is brought in this right here that we're reading about right here in second chronicles 24 this is what we're calling the second attack this is the one that we're relating to when uh, Arabs attack, and then Arabs attack Israel, and then World War III begins. It's part of the World War III in this second attack. Okay? The Lord's saying, no, no, no. My warning, this was a warning, the first one, to wake you guys up, to repent. Remember, the Son of Man is going to be here during 40 days, during those 50 period. The Lord is there for 40. He is going to warn as Jonah did. As the son of man, he's going to be doing incredible signs and wonders. But remember, the, the Muslims are going to say, this is ad Dajjal. Christian, that's, that's your antichrist, they're going to say. And the Christians are going to say, yes, that's got to be antichrist. It must be antichrist. Because antichrist comes first, they were told. Not realizing that antichrist does come first, but this is before the beginning. You see, it's before the beginning because the 50 days isn't yet, isn't yet the beginning of the next seven. Because the Lord God will begin from day one after Pentecost because he's counting from Shabuah to Shabuah. Man thinks we've understood the right Shabuahs. But the Lord God has his own mystery. And this end of year is connected to that last day. You see, the Holy Ghost gives that anointing on the 50th day and leaves. And the second attack will take place. This is the one that will remove them from the land for the seven years. Who's going to do it? Syria. And it came to pass, Second Chronicles 24, 23, and it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against them and they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all the spoil of them unto king of Damascus. Hello. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand because they, the Jews, because they had forsaken the God of their fathers. Remember that? Because they had forsaken. So with a small army, Syria, Assad is going to come in. 
Who is Syria and Assad? We've seen the exact same thing. We've shared this in the past. He is the lion. Okay, destruction that's coming from the north. The lion has come up from his thicket and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. The lion is coming to bring that second attack against Jerusalem. And World War III will follow. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people against people. And it's the destroyer of the Gentiles that's on his way. If you guys remember this, this was so fantastic once we, once we understood this. You see, for the disobedience, this is the, now what takes place in this is horrific. But for Jerusalem's disobedience, for the Jews' disobedience of having the land for, for, for the 50 plus years and being in disobedience, never having obeyed the seventh year of rest, the Shemitah year, the sword, pestilence, death and destruction is coming upon them seven times, seven years for it. They're going to be removed from the land. You see, it even tells us, and I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out the sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. As long as it lieth desolate and your enemies are in, uh, 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 and you be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. For as long as it layeth desolate, it shall rest because it did not rest in your Sabbaths when you dwelt on the land. What is this saying? Exactly what we've understood that Zechariah said. You see, we think we're now in this 73rd, that it starts today, they turn 73 and we're in it. But according to the Lord's God's, the Lord God's eyes, his count is different than ours. We know right here, we know. He says, look, the angel says, how long, Lord, will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? Is he saying the people? No, he's saying the land. How long, Lord, before you'll have mercy on the land, your land, where your name is written, for which you have had indignation these 70 years. And then destruction comes, and look at this. There they are, scattered. There they are, scattered. So if they come into the land, now somebody had asked me this today in a comment. Somebody else had asked me not too long ago. We've got a video on it. But for those that don't understand, Israel turning 73 is because in Leviticus chapter 19, the Lord said, when you come into the land that I shall give you for three years, it is uncircumcised. You can't take anything from it. Okay, so it's three years, then the 70. And here we are now today at 73. But the Lord doesn't count exactly on that date. Okay, that's what I was explaining. He counts from his true Pentecost. Okay, that is when this, the, the second sevens will begin. This is what I was showing you. This will not begin until the day after Pentecost. Because the Lord is counting from Pentecost to Pentecost. Okay, that's why the 50 is in this portion, the last portion of the seven. So that's the understanding as to why Israel could be 73. But as for Jerusalem, Jerusalem is turning on the Hebrew calendar today as well. On the Hebrew calendar, Jerusalem is turning 54. And the answer to that, for those who were asking, is found in Luke chapter 13. The fig tree generation. That was the question I had today, and I've had it a couple times since I did the video. That the fig tree generation in Luke chapter 13, he says, three years I am come and this, and this fig tree hasn't produced. And the, and, and, the, and the vine dresser says, let me dung it for one year. Let me dung it. Let me have one more year. So a fourth year. And he says, and if it's good, great. And if not, well, tear it down. That is the four years for Jerusalem. They were given three when they took the land. Then they got the additional one for dung, and that's why Jerusalem can be 54 years old. So in the same year that Israel got its three, 
Jerusalem gets its four, and 73 and 54 equal the same year right now that we are in. All right? It's another one of those, oh my goodness, this is awesome. Because that was another very important revelation to how we can have 73 and 74 at the same time and how it was possible that the tribulation hasn't already begun with 50 and 70, you see? It was the revelation. It is the answer. Do you, do you follow how it cannot be another year? It can't be next year at Passover and so forth. We're, we're way beyond it now. You can't even do the 13, 14 years anymore to the 2000 return of Christ. Feet down on the Mount of Olives, returning after two days, after 2,000 years. You could no longer do 73. You could do no longer do 54. Knowing that the Lord is counting from true Pentecost. You see, if it wasn't true, then why in Zechariah chapter 1 did it say these 70 years? And in Daniel chapter 9, Say these 70 weeks. It's weeks of years. Okay? Yes, it's weeks as in the true Pentecost, but it's weeks of years. It's from Pentecost to Pentecost to Pentecost to Pentecost to Pentecost for 70 years. All these weeks are a reference as years, just like the rest of them are in here that we've shared before. You following? So when we go into this, this attack here is the second attack. This is when um, when uh, Assyria, when Assad, the lion, will attack from the north. That is this one right here. Okay? We've, we've got a grasp. We know how this is going to start, brothers and sisters. We know that there's going to be an attack. We know that the Son of Man is going to be here for 40 days. We know that there's going to be a second attack, and it's going to be Assad. They're going to surround and destroy them, and they're going to be scattered for the next seven years. It'll be the time of seals at that point, okay? That will begin with World War III, but World War III is going to have to settle, and that's when the Antichrist will step in. You see, it starts with Syria. You remember this? If we go back into Genesis 16, right? When, when uh, Abraham has his first son, right? Has Ishmael. Abraham is 86 years old. And he's told that what? And he will be a wild man, Ishmael. He is affliction. He's tribulation. He's going to be a wild man and everybody against his and his. Well, they're always against them, aren't they? It relates to Arabs. Well, Ishmael is born when Abraham is 86. But when Abraham turns 99, 13 years later, and the covenant is made, we find out when Abraham is 99, we find out that Ishmael was 13 years old. Do you know what this is a type and shadow of? Do you know what this, this relates to? Watch this. Okay. So what are we talking about? The escape is going to happen. And then the attack. Right at the beginning of this time, it's the attack by Ishmael. It's the attack by the lion. Okay, this is what's happening here. It's the attack by the lion. It's the attack by the Arabs, by, by the type and shadow Ishmael. That's what I just showed you. He's going to come with a small army and he's going to defeat Jerusalem and the Jews because it was their disobedience that removes them from the land. Okay, that the Lord allowed it. Now, we just saw that Ishmael is there in the 13th year. So there's Ishmael in the 13th year. And we know at the end of the 13th year to the beginning of the 14th is when the Lord shows up feet down on the Mount of Olives. 13 years later. And what does he, what does he do? The Lord renews the covenant 
that he made at the beginning of trumpets that he had to break when Satan came, he's going to renew when he returns at the end of the sixth trumpet, at the end of the six years of trumpets. And when we see the story with Abraham and Ishmael, how Abraham's 99 and Ishmael is now 13, God makes a covenant with the cutting of the skin. It's the same time period. But guess what? Ishmael's still there, isn't he? Ishmael is still there. Watch this. Ishmael is still there. And if we follow this story, remember this? In 1 Kings chapter 20, check this out. In 1 Kings chapter 20, we have another story of the king of Syria. What, what happens with this king of Syria? Okay, the king of Syria. Listen to what it says. And behold, there came a prophet unto Ahab, king of Israel, uh, thou in great multitude. And it says uh, in verse 15, in 1 Kings 20, verse 15, then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces that were 232. And after them, he numbered all the people of the children of Israel being 7,000. So what are we seeing? A number group, a numbered group of 7,000 people. We follow this down after the 7,000 numbered and we come into verse 22 and 23. And it said, And the prophet came unto the king of Israel and said unto him, Go strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, this word return of the year, is a recurrence as returned. Well, remember 13 years earlier, they had one and they won. Now the king of Syria is coming back or has already returned. We'll touch on that in a minute. He's returning now. And this time when he returns, see, even as a returning, it's the king of Syria will come up against thee. And the servants of the king of Syria said unto him, their gods are gods of the hills. Therefore, they are stronger than we, but let us fight against them in the plain. And surely we shall be stronger than they. And it came to pass at the return of the year, verse 26, that Benadad numbered the Syrians and went out and spoke to fight against Israel. And the children of Israel were numbered and were all present and went against them, and the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. And there came a man of God and spoke unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord God, uh, the Lord is a God of the hills, but not a God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all his great multitude in thine hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Do you want to know what this is? Do you notice? Do you see this? One of the revived, there's 22 chapters. It's kind of interesting, right? 22 chapters, 22 years. In the 20th chapter, in the 20th year, which is the 13th of Ishmael. Ishmael is who? Ishmael is the affliction. Ishmael is the Arab. Ishmael is the one that first came against them at the beginning of 13 years and is now coming at the end of 13 years. Who was it here? It was the king of Syria. Who is it here? The king of Syria. When they came at the first, the Lord God gave them the victory because of the, of the disobedience of the Jews. When he comes this next time, He's going to have a great army. Who is this guy going to be? Well, do you remember what happens? He gets defeated when, when the Lord comes here. That antichrist spirit, remember? When the Lord comes at the end of the sixth seal, as you read at the end of the sixth seal, it's the Father God coming with the Lamb. Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. 
for the great day of his wrath has come. The Lord God defeats the Antichrist, that beast. Right? We read this in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, where are you, Daniel? Daniel chapter 7. Watch this. What do we have? Four great beasts. The first one is the lion. There he is again, just like Jeremiah chapter 4. First one is the lion. The second one is the bear. Okay, we all know that's Russia. That's going to be part of nation against nation. This is this is the, um, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. Okay, nation against nation. It's going to be the bear. Then you got the leopard. We've said it many times. That's Germany. Germany is going to become the hub, is going to be the body, the, the control center of the Antichrist spirit in the end of days. And then, of course, you got the fourth beast, and that fourth beast will become a combination of all of them, just like we read in Revelation 13. He's, he's part of all three that were before him. And he had ten horns, right? Then we see the Ancient of Days did come. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. That's the bride of Christ standing there. The thousands of thousands that ministered unto him, they were part of the escape, but they were Jews that were accounted worthy as well because right now it's Jew and Gentile. And then we see that what? The voice of great words, which horns spake against, and what happens? The beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. This is the antichrist being killed but we know that he comes back to life right when the pit is opened he's the one that was here he was then he is not during the first half of trumpets because who's come the son of man the son of man coming in the clouds to the ancient of days this is them coming on heavenly mount zion so he was he is not, and at the fifth trumpet, he shall be. So what happens when we read uh, in back in 1 Kings chapter 20, which is the 13 years later, when the king of Syria will come again, this time he's coming with, first of all, we had 7,000 numbered. And in fact, we have 7,000 numbered. But if you go back in chapter 19 of 1 Kings, you see a whole bunch of really interesting information because just like we would think at the end of the 19 years, we see that the children of Israel had forsaken the covenant. That's exactly correct. Do you remember that? When does the covenant get forsaken? Right here. In this time of the 18th year. So they will have forsaken the covenant. Remember, the Lord God has to, uh, uh, Jesus has to break the covenant because Satan has come and the pit has been opened. So they've forsaken the covenant. And you see, as you read it through, you see that the Lord has left 7,000 in Israel. He's got 7,000 in Israel. So when you come to chapter 20, these are those 7,000 that you see that he's got there in Israel, then this attack is coming at the end of the 13th year of the king of Syria. Well, guess what? When this attack comes, you see, he, the attack is coming and he's going to deliver them into their hand. It's the exact same story that we share here. When the Lord comes at the end of 13 years, you can say to the start of 14, what happens in that final battle? It's, it's Zechariah chapter 14, okay? It's Zechariah chapter 14. The end of 13, beginning of 14, it's the same thing. We find out that this is the second battle. It's not the first battle. The Lord says in Zechariah 14, verse 3, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. When did the Lord fight in the day of battle? It was the first sword. It was the end of seals that we were talking about a moment ago when the Antichrist was defeated. Okay? But the rest had their had everything taken away from them, but they weren't killed. Okay? Yes, many people died in that battle at the end of the sixth seal, but the 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 leaders weren't. All right? Except for the Antichrist. 
This is the second battle. And here's the Lord feet down on the Mount of Olives. And when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives, you see that there's a group that's going to fight. Who's going to fight against them? In verse uh, Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Uh, where is it? And Judah, verse 14. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And they'll take all of that wealth and abundance back. But the Jews are also going to fight. Well, that's what we see back here in 1 Kings chapter 20 as well you find out that they're going to fight. After those 7,000, what do we see when when, uh, when this battle takes place? God says, they may have the great multitude and they're in the valley. But this time, their great multitude for saying the way they did that I'm a God of the hills, but not of the valleys. This time, I'm going to deliver their great multitude into your hands, and you're going to destroy them. So who's going to fight against them? Judah, just like we saw in Zechariah 14. And how can we show that this is truly the end when the the Syrian comes again at the end? Well, watch this. (coughs) If we go into Revelation chapter... Oh, give me a second here. Chapter, chapter, chapter... Nine. We see, where is it, where is it? No, sorry, chapter 11. We see at the end of the sixth trumpet. Look at what we see at the end of the sixth trumpet. Revelation 11, end of the sixth trumpet. When the Lord is about to come, feet down on the Mount of Olives at the end of the sixth trumpet. Just like we were showing in in, uh, 1 Kings chapter 20, the 7,000 of the Lord are there first. Then there's going to be this great battle. And what do we see here? In Revelation eleven thirteen, 13, we see the group that the Lord saved. And the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake, there was slain men 7,000. These are the 7,000 that he had set aside for this. And when they see this happen, it says, And the remnant were affrighted. And gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. The second trumpet, uh, the second woe or the sixth trumpet is ended. When the seventh one is about to sound, everything on earth and heaven, everything is the Lord's. And what's about to happen now? The great final battle. This one is the second sword. You follow? For those that are wondering how this works. If you see in Revelation chapter 17, as I start to wind this down, it says the beast that was, okay, he was at the second half of seals, is not because he was destroyed at the end of the sixth seal and the Lord is there as Jerusalem and the city is being rebuilt in the beginning of that first half of that uh, second set of seven years, the first half of trumpets, okay? He is not, but he shall be. So he was, he is not, and shall be. When? When the pit is opened. That's the fifth trumpet. That's the fifth trumpet. The fifth trumpet is the mid of trumpets. Okay? It's after the first three and a half years have come to an end. And the son of perdition is going to come out. Because he was, is not, and shall be. This is that king of Syria again. It's that same type and shadow of this beast. Okay? That's what happens. And if you you follow this, where sometimes there's confusion is this right here. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. When we read this and you continue to read the story, we tend to think, That the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. And then we read in verse 12, Revelation 17, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest. So what happens 
is when you hear and you read about the 10 horns that follow this verse right here before it, we tend to think that the 10 horns are connected to the son of, uh, 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 to the son of perdition when he comes up out of the pit. But that's not the case. It's telling you in the verse before of each time it relates to the beast. So there's the beast that was, that is not, and he is also the eighth. Okay? And goeth into perdition. Goeth. He's going to go into perdition. So this ten horns isn't talking about when he's going to go into perdition. It's talking about this portion of the was. It's talking about the seals. That's why in um, in Daniel chapter 7, it had the ten horns also. That's why in Daniel chapter 2, when you have the image of Nebuchadnezzar and the image of Revelation 13 and, and the, what people are going to bow to and so forth, what you're seeing is at the when the Lord comes, when the rock that comes, that mountain cast, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, that mountain, uh, sorry, that stone carved out of mountain that's cast to the feet, to the toes, and destroys the entire image, that is the end of the six years of seals, or the, the end of the sixth seal, when the ten toes and the image of the beast and all of that is destroyed. This is what is being spoken about. And here's the way to understand it more clearly for those who, who really aren't too sure. It says in verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For the Lord is the Lord of Lord, uh, for for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and they that are with them are called chosen and faithful. Do you see that? He shall overcome them. He didn't even say he'd kill them. Interesting, right? Why didn't he kill them? Well, because in Daniel chapter 7, he doesn't say he doesn't say he kills them. It says that he takes their kingdom away. They're defeated and all their kingdoms are taken away. But he doesn't kill them. They have, they have another season and time. They still have more time to go. The only one who's killed is the beast. And who is this beast and when is he killed in this reference? The was. You see, that's the Daniel 7. That's the was. At that time in Daniel, he's the is, but he becomes the was when these guys are defeated. And how can you see? How can you understand it? Because it's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and it's all lowercase with the exception of the L, the first L and the first K. Where is the greater battle? That's in chapter 19. In chapter 19, we see him coming now on a white horse. He does judge and make war. So now what are we talking about here? What we're talking about here is what we're reading over in 1 Kings chapter 20 at the end of 13 to that 14th year when that battle is going to take place. This is that battle. See, clothed with white, and he says, and out of, in Revelation 19, verse 15, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You see, now he's going to rule with the rod of iron. See, now he shall rule with the rod of iron. In Revelation chapter 12, 5, he's going to rule. He will. He's going to give that rule to his 144,000 until his time of ruling all, which is the, the millennial reign. And here what we see. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Remember, where is this treading of the winepress? Where does this take place? The valley. The valley. You see, the great multitude is going to gather into the valley because he. they said he is a God of the hills and the mountains. So we are going to go into the valleys and the Lord God is going to deliver this victory to the Jews, to Judah, just like Zechariah 14, just like he said in 1 Kings chapter 20, just like we see here in Revelation 19. This is when he delivers that final victory, just like we see at the at the end of uh, 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 in Revelation, the seventh trumpet time frame. And here's how we know the difference. And he hath on his vesture 
and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. This is the great second battle. He is no longer little case. He is now the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords, having brought the final destruction to all those who came against Jerusalem. You see how that works? It's awesome stuff. There are two battles, guys. There are two battles. You see? And that's why that whole understanding in chapter 17, he was, is not, and shall be. He he was because he got defeated in the first battle. He is not because he was defeated in the Lord's there. And then shall be because he's going to rise up when Satan is cast down and Messiah has to break that covenant that he said in Revelation 11 that he had made with all men. Uh, sorry, not Revelation 11, Zechariah 11. You follow? Guys, it's so exciting. When you understand these things, when you, when you understand the books have opened, when you can understand what all of these chapters to years are telling us, it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. And the revelation that we talked about at the beginning is this right here. Is this knowing that the bride of Christ, the first fruits of the wheat harvest of the Feast of Weeks, is to be observed at the day of true resurrection according to the Lord God himself. You could see the understanding of the count of the years. It is all laid out here. It is all laid out here. It's in the book. And the book tells you spring of 2021 is when it all begins. It, it, I didn't set no date, just spring of 2021. You've got the revelation of all the churches in, in the end time understanding. It is beautiful. It is so crazy wild to understand. And that's why knowing what we know, understanding the revelations the Lord has given me to share and to help you guys so that you guys go in and share and you guys go in and seek and you are diligently seeking so that we can pray to all be accounted worthy. We are all seeing it. We understand these things. We know this is the season. We know this is the time. So could it be that the Lord is bringing the beginning of the end all the way back to the beginning? We're about to find out. With that, brothers and sisters, I love you. I pray this has blessed you, that it's helped renew your spirit, that it's given you strength and confidence and power to keep seeking and to keep watching and to keep diligently in his word and in him. Don't forget, guys, come and join us over at the Ministry Revealed website. Go into the menu, join the forum. Come and chat with us, share prayers news as we keep our eyes on Jerusalem and keep our eyes on the skies. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless your families again. And hopefully we'll see you even sooner than the next video. God bless you. Bye for now.